and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final part of Sonic 3D Flicky's Island on the Sega Saturn. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are tackling Panic Puppet Zone, the final zone of the game, and one of the most unique levels in the entire game, because this level by here is basically Dr. Eggman's base. Dr. Eggman hasn't had the time to actually stuff his Flickies into his badniks this time around, so all of the Flickies will actually be located in the corner of each of the areas of the zones. So, uh, yeah, we're going to basically be wandering around this zone, looking around corners for capsules, holding the flickies, as opposed to looking for badniks to hold the flickies. But do not fret, there are badniks in this zone, but uh, for the most part you can uh, ignore the badniks and just try and avoid them as best you can. In fact, I try and recommend avoiding the badniks as best you can because they are really aggressive at this point in time. This is the point in time in the game where the bandics really start to increase in their difficulty and oh my god this music's amazing i absolutely adore the soundtrack it's so good it's so so good i don't know i, I really like uh, the music of this game what can i tell you what can i tell you uh, it's from this point onwards in the franchise where the music starts to really really hit its stride in all the Sonic games coming up, you know, after this game we got Sonic R, then uh, then we're moving on to the 3D games of Sonic Adventure, and as everyone knows, Sonic Adventure has the legendary status of of music design. You know, the soundtrack's just glorious in these games, and I just I love it. But yeah, the main gimmick of, the, of this zone, like I said, is collecting these flickies that are located in various corners of the zone in giant capsules. They're easy enough to find. You don't. Uh, it's probably the quickest zone in the game to actually complete, I will be honest. And you only need to find five flickies. Because this is apparently Dr. Eggman's base when you just didn't have the time to place the flickies into different areas. You just didn't have the time because he's in a rush at this point because we're catching up to him. So, uh... Yeah, there's only five flickies in the zone you need to deal with, so once you get to the end, that'll be that. Although one of the big things you'll notice about the zone is there are a load of conveyor belts. Now these conveyor belts are activated by using various switches, like the one on screen right now. And to activate the switch, you basically need to run along the top of the switch, which will rotate the lever to the left or right. And obviously, if it's to the left, the conveyor belt will push you to the left, and if it's to the right, conveyor belt will push you to the right so you do need to make use of this in order to progress further and further and further on properly but yeah it's time for the final act mm. are you as excited as I am <laughs> wow I'm excited and Jesus Christ this music and I do believe that um, a couple of the music tracks in this game if you if you anyone's played Sonic Chronicles around the end game will actually recognize but the music is nowhere near as high quality in Sonic Chronicles as it is in this. The music in this is just phenomenal. They're really taking advantage of the new CD technology, which I do appreciate. Like I said, I, I even though I over, I do prefer the Mega Drive soundtrack just due to the fact it's a lot more catchy, it's a lot more melodic. I do love the atmosphere of the soundtrack for the Sega Saturn version. It's, it really takes advantage of the CD technology. It takes advantage of the fact, okay, we don't need to use a sound card anymore. We can actually do anything we want to bother using, just place it on a disc. And I, I, I just like that, you know? I just like that they're really starting to take strides with the soundtrack. Like, I'm a very I'm very into my video game soundtracks, you know, folks. When... when when games have good soundtracks, I really do appreciate it. It really does add to the overall game experience, I feel. Because a lot of people... Ex I, I love my gameplay and I love my graphics, but soundtrack is way up the air in importance with those two for me, you know? Like, if a game has a rubbish soundtrack, I can dig it as long as it's got good gameplay. If a game has bad graphics, I can still dig it as long as it's got good gameplay as well, but the soundtrack really, if it's a really good soundtrack, it usually melds really well with gameplay in these sort of games, it just makes the gameplay feel better, you know? Like, uh, have you ever played Sonic 06 one without any music playing in the background? Trust me, it's boring as hell. <laughs> but if you've got music in the background, it's, it's more tolerable. Don't get me wrong, it's Sonic 06, but, uh... Like I said, it's a guilty pleasure, but I recognize the faults in that game, and I know loads of people don't like it that much, so... 
But I, I have my fun with that one. Kind of like with this one, actually, because this is one of the lesser popular Sonic games, but I still enjoy it, you know. I, 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 I do recommend this as a good purchase. But anyway, going up into Dr. Eggman's nostril, Act 2 is different. As you can tell, there are no flickies in Act 2. You just go straight to the gold ring. It's a traditional Sonic level in that regard. So now it's time for the Panic Puppet Zone boss. And if you don't have the seven Chaos Emeralds at this point, this will be the final boss fight of the game, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can guess, it is... Kinda of pretty, it, well, kind of pretty much. It is pretty much the hardest boss of the game, pretty much. Obviously, the final boss can be a bit more challenging, but uh, I, I personally find this to be the hardest boss overall in the entire game. But basically, every single phase has similar mechanic. You need to manipulate Eggman and go to Eggman into attacking you. In which case, his weak point will become hittable. When his weak point is hittable, you will know because you'll hear this really weird brr 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 noise. So uh, hit the big blue glowy spot and uh, just continue onwards, you know, just keep hitting the fuck me like, that's the best thing I can do to explain it. And uh, for this first phase he'll try and smash you with uh, these spike balls, you can just uh, run underneath, wait until he attacks and bobs your uncle. Now for the second phase, Bayou is going to shoot off flamethrowers, and these flamethrowers will follow you just like the flamethrowers in Volcano Valley Zone boss did. You know, I didn't really show that off because I just jumped into that boss repeatedly and killed him. <laughs> so uh, just run from left to the right to the left to the right and constantly hit Eggman whenever the big fuck me light starts glowing. That's the best thing I can do to explain this. And uh, it's... it's easy. <laughs> Like I said, it's the hardest boss in the game. It's not a hard boss in general, though. You know, it's more than completable, and they do give you tons of rings to get through this one, folks. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't worry. You can still get loads of rings to help you out in the long run. What can I say? And of course, as you can tell, as you destroy one of the arms, it gets a little bit easier then, because the second arm will be the only thing trying to attack you, so... You know, as time goes on, this boss fight does get a little bit easier, does get a little bit more tricky. Well, it gets a little bit less tricky, I should say. Now, for this particular phase of the boss fight here, this is probably the hardest phase. He's going to try and shoot you with these energy blasts that he's going to shoot out from these... I don't know, these these guns look like... They look like speakers to me, I don't know. But uh, what I sort of recommend is jump like a madman whenever he does actually start shooting out. And move from the left to the right to the left to the right and keep hitting the big blue lights on Eggman's shoulders. This will hurt damage him. Just keep doing this and eventually he will go down. This is one of those bosses that when you know what to do, it's pathetic. But your first playthrough of the game, he will give you trouble. He will give you trouble when you don't know how to beat this guy. But uh, with that, that is this boss over and done with, ladies and gentlemen. We are now done. Or at least I would say we are done that if we didn't have the seven Chaos Emeralds. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, well, not unfortunately, fortunately, I should say, we do have the seven Chaos Emeralds, so now it's time to head to the final boss battle of the game. And this cutscene only shows up on the Mega Drive version of the game. It only shows up in the Genesis version, so, uh... Yeah, if you're playing this on the sand, for some reason you don't get any cutscene, I guess. You go straight to the final boss for some reason. Uh, I have no idea why. But it's time to fight Eggman's final weapon. I don't know what this thing is. I'm, I'm going to call it the... The... Egg Timer. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So this boss fight by here is the tough... Well... Probably your toughest boss fight in the game if you don't know what you're doing. To start things off, he's going to try and shoot laser beams at you. So just stay in the center of the screen, give or take, until he actually go stops moving his paws. When his uh, little finger tootsies start moving, then he's going to fire us so jump out of the ray. And he'll repeat that twice. After he's repeated that twice, he will fly off and you can hit him. And uh, I do recommend ignoring all of the rings. The rings will be in this arena, the rings will be around, but I ignore them for the most part because we do need to make a couple of loops around this boss arena. We do need to fight Dr. Eggman a couple of times. For the second part by here, he will shoot out a flamethrower. Whenever the flamethrower goes around, he'll shoot it three times. On the third attempt, wait for him to show his body and just boop him in the body until he goes out, until he gets destroyed. And now we are on phase three, ladies and gentlemen, and this one can be, this is probably the most, 
palm sweaty of all of the zone, all of this boss fight. I always, I always get really on edge and nervous when I'm fighting this because you have crushers to deal with. These crushers hurt, as you'd expect the crushers. So what you want to do is uh, wait until the noise in the background goes, and then uh, as this goes to stop, he will crush down. So just wait for him to do his fist blast ability that you just saw there. Jump over the fists. And keep running around like a headless chicken until you're able to beat him. What can I tell you? Next phase, now he's going to continuously shoot missiles down from the heavens above. And he will shoot down a grand total of five missiles. And then he will reveal himself to be hittable. So when you count to five, just go up to this point of the screen. He always respawns at the same area every time you play this boss fight, folks. So if you don't know where to go, just remember the same. Every time you do this boss battle, every phase will be the exact same. Because you do have to repeat this boss fight twice. You have to repeat both all these phases twice in a row. But it's, it's easy enough to deal with. And of course, for this particular section of the boss fight, I just recommend seeing hiding in the left corner of the screen. And uh, that platform shouldn't have appeared yet. That's a weird glitch. But yeah, this is a big reason why I said leave the rings. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have been, if I left, didn't leave these rings here, I wouldn't have any rings for the second playthrough of the boss. So I wouldn't have any rings to take him down the second time. But uh, I do believe there's only two loops you have to do. You only have to repeat all these uh, phases a second time. So yeah, it's the longest boss fight in the game. It's definitely the trickiest if you don't know what you're doing. But... Um, you know, compared to the last boss we fought, I, I personally find this one a great deal easier. You know, if you, as long as you know the pattern, this one's a great deal easier than the previous boss fight. You have to... it's a lot less tricky, you know, you, you have to be a lot less precise with a lot of these things. But, uh, yeah, that's the boss for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly do like this boss fight. And, um... I don't know what to think about the music, though, because the music is just a remix of the standard boss theme. And honestly, I find the standard boss fight theme to be pretty weak in comparison to the other soundtracks in the game. I don't know why. Like, it, from what I'm gathering, I'm gathering they're trying to use the CD quality soundtrack, and for some reason, the early 3D C, not early 3D, early CD-based Sonic games always tend to use the Dr. Eggman laughing in the backtrack, and I don't know. It, it just has the Sonic CD sort of sound to it, and I didn't like the boss fight theme all that much in Sonic CD either. The only thing I like about it is Dr. Eggman just sounds really menacing. I don't know. They could have gone with something a bit more epic, a bit more dramatic for the final boss theme, I think. Cause that's all I'm really getting at here. But I'm probably nitpicking at this point. <laughs> it's better than the Mega Drive final boss theme, because the Mega Drive final boss theme just sounds really... Relaxing. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of weird. But, uh, yes, yeah, finish this off once and for all. Eggman, you're going down. Oh no! Little bouncy balls! I don't like little bouncy balls. I bounced one down the stairs when I was younger. It bounced off the wall, hit me in the head, and gave me a concussion. Wow! <laughs> Uh, but there we go, just boop him one last time, and that is it. Dr. Eggman is down and out for good. And uh, we're basically victorious, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. That is it for this playthrough. That is it for this Let's Play. And I am happy. Yay! And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Sonic 3D on the Sega Saturn. Absolutely phenomenal game. I do love this game through and through. And I know a lot of people aren't big fans of the game, primarily due to the the different sort of focus. It's more exploration than it is level, just, you know, speed, base, go point A to point B. 
But um, I enjoy it, you know. A lot of people don't like the gameplay. They don't, they don't like the slipperiness of Sonic. But I quite enjoy the gameplay. I, I, I got used to the slipperiness over the years. So I recognize this game isn't for everybody. This isn't a Sonic game I would recommend everyone to play. But if you're a Sonic fan, if you want to check it out, I, I would say, yeah, go ahead. I, I like it. I really do like it. Soundtrack... I love the soundtrack. I've been gushing about the soundtrack all the way through, and it's something you're going to see me do a lot more during the series from this point. Well, not this point on exactly. From the LP after the next LP, you're going to see me start really gushing about the soundtrack, because this is around the point where Sonic soundtracks really, really hit their stride. This is the point where almost every game has such a memorable and amazing soundtrack that people will remember. Graphically, I love the graphics, you know, it's obviously an improvement over the Mega Drive 1 due to the detail. But some people prefer how um, lighter the Mega Drive sound graphics are, as opposed to the version we're playing right now, where the graphics are obviously a lot more darker, a lot more realistic. But, uh, yeah, there is that. And, uh, yeah, that's that's been Sonic 3D, you know, I, I can't really say any more about it. So, thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish, and I'll catch you all next time when we take on Sonic Blast on the Sega Game Gear. Which is, uh, ugh, I'll talk about that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hope you all enjoy. Uh, the credits music is My Hero, I believe. I can't remember who made it. Like, uh, ah, oh, it says right by here on my screen, actually. Richard Jacques made it. And the vocals are done by Debbie Morris, so, uh. Yeah, check it out, good song. And I decided splicing all the Mega Drive uh, gameplay I had on the hard drive as well, just to, so you guys can see the differences between the Mega Drive and Saturn version. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Bye! Strong.